Good morning, folks. Good morning. Good morning on this wet, rainy man. It is so wet out there on this Thursday morning. Good to see you guys this morning here on the chat. Come on in, grab yourself a cup of coffee, get your Bibles, get your journals. Come on in here and sit on down with me this morning and let's have a good time. And we're going to kickstart our day as the rain continues to fall here in the heart of the Arkansas Delta. It has slacked up some, but it is still a slow drip that's outside. I can see it, although the squirrels have have uh, uh, realized that it's probably not as bad as they think it is, and the squirrels have now begun to come out. But it is show enough raining here in the heart of the Delta. So if you've got a rain gauge, for those of you who got rain gauges, how much rain did we get last night, guys? I mean, uh, uh, whoo, holy cow. I've got, I've got big old standing pot, pots of water out back. I mean, big patches of water. A standard water. My my neighbor to the west, my neighbor to the west has their entire backyard is underwater. I'm not even kidding. You can't, there's no common hint that there's ground underneath it. There is so much water in their backyard. Of course, uh, for those of you who, who know where we live, we back up to the Roberts um, uh, stables and their uh, cattle farm and their, their horse farm. And so uh, we've got the pastures behind us. And so there's a lot of water that comes off the pasture and kind of rolls on into uh, our part of the neighborhood, but it typically goes into my neighbor's yard and divides us. There's a little runoff that runs in between our property and their property, but their entire property is underwater right now. It is unreal how much water is here. So if you've uh, had, had a gauge out and you know exactly what... Uh, uh, what kind of volume we've had, I'd love to know. Uh, I see the uh, the Allens are sneaking in. Good morning to Tommy and Arlene. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, I'm trying to get us in here today, trying to get some things going on. Say hello when you get here. I've just had a hummingbird hang outside my window. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I got a hummer hanging out. So, all right, I got, got, to, got to figure out something for that dude. I got to, that's a new one. That that's a new one. I hadn't seen a Hummer here, so uh, that's uh, that, that's a pretty cool thing, guys. When you get in, we want to just encourage you to please hit the share button. We would love for you to do that. That uh, allows us to uh, send uh, our broadcast a little farther out here on the internet. We'd appreciate it. Debbie Tacker, good morning on this soggy morning in Wynn, Arkansas. And to that, I say Amen and Amen. I see Brian Ponder. Good morning, Brian. There is our representative from Ramsey Hill. There's Miss D. She is in the building. Good to see you, sweet lady. Glad you were here. Glad you're hanging out with the preacher this morning. There's Miss Denny. Good morning, Miss Denny. Good morning. It is raining, guys. It is raining cats and dogs. But not to tell you the kind of volume it's coming down. Okay. Y'all know where Spring River is? You know, around Hardy? You know, you go to Jonesboro. You go, you know, head, head up into the hills. And, uh, and Hardy is up in there, Spring River. It is major flooding this morning. Spring River, Hardy, Arkansas, received five inches of water overnight. And it, there, it, it's bad right now. And so uh, if you happen to see pics from uh, uh, Region 8 TV out of Jonesboro, you're going to see this. But uh, Spring River is not in a good place this morning. Campgrounds, underwater. Um, yeah, it's just, it, it's tough. So maybe uh, when we get off the live this morning, you guys can go and take a look at that. But lots and lots of water fell. Uh, you know, a lot of the water came down in North Arkansas, uh, in specific Northwest Arkansas yesterday. And, um, uh, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but, uh, our, uh, our Southern Baptist convention here at Arkansas, we have a major, uh, campground in Siloam Springs. It's, it's one of the, the, uh, premier youth camps in America. And uh, Siloam is literally in Siloam, Arkansas, and it is um, al almost in the corner of uh, the northwest corner of the state of Arkansas. And uh, we saw photographs yesterday of Siloam, and the entire campground is underwater uh, yesterday with all the rain that was coming through. So lots and lots of water has fell in our state over the past 24 hours, and it looks like we're going to continue to get it 
for the better part of the day. Uh, guys, I'm trying to get some things shared myself. If you can, please hit the share button, share it to your news feed. We would appreciate that so we can get out and get this thing uh, a little bit farther, a little bit faster. Invite people to like our page. We want as many people to like and follow this page as we possibly can. So if you will help us to do that, that would be huge, 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 huge. I am almost done. There's Judy Davis. Judy says that she has got the birds singing at her place this morning. Miss Judy. Other than this Hummer that just went by my window that was kind of peeping in, I have not seen a a bird all morning long. So that's uh, that, that that's kind of cool to see that. But the squirrels are out here. Boy, they're just uh, they're you know they're they're kind of crazy. So they're they're fun to watch. There's Mary Weddington. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Good morning. All right, guys. Everybody in. Everybody got your stuff. Everybody got your coffee. Man, oh man, that coffee is so good on a rainy day like today, isn't it? Mm mm mm. And it's so rainy. Of course, it's slowing down my internet service here on my computer. It doesn't surprise me. So. Lots and lots of things going on. Just as an FYI, for those of you who knew that Pam Jones had a, a heart cath yesterday, uh, we shared her update last night. She was able to get home, uh, and I have talked with Brother Larry this morning, and she is feeling fine this morning, and uh, Brother Larry said that she rested extremely well last night. So for those of you who know Pam, we just want to uh, uh, just kind of pass that a word along that she is doing doing good this morning. So all of that good stuff. Uh, we had a lot of prayer requests that, that uh, were mentioned last night in our Bible study. And if you uh, were not with us, you can go back to last night's broadcast and you can get all of those uh, listed. We would love to have you join us in prayer as we consistently pound the throne room of God for what's going on right here in our world. We would love for you to join that. And speaking of last night's broadcast, guys, 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 if you were not with us, you really need to go back. It was a powerful ending to the book of Galatians. We've spent several weeks, 17 weeks to be exact, uh, 17 weeks really, really dissecting the book of Galatians. And you can find those all right here on Facebook or to really make it easy for you if you just wanted to study the book of Galatians. If you will go to our YouTube channel, go to YouTube uh, and, and just type in in the search engine Ridgewood Baptist Church for City, Arkansas, uh, that is going to take you to our channel and we would encourage you to uh, subscribe to our channel. First of all, just subscribe. That way you're notified uh, of all of the uh, uh, videos that we post. But uh, we have playlists that have been established uh, for our message or teaching series. And so we actually have a playlist for all of the Galatian series. And you can literally start at number one and work your way through if you would like to do that. So uh, that's probably the easiest. You can just go there and you can take your time and you can go through the entire book of Galatians literally verse by verse and see what was going on that Paul was addressing to those churches in the Galatian region. Miss Denny says, what's next? Miss Denny, I, I don't know that answer right this second. Uh, I'm praying through a couple of things to see where God's going to take us. Um, I will, I will tell you this, uh, whatever we begin this coming Wednesday, it's going to be a four week. I think it's four weeks. It's going to be a four week window that we can wrap up in four weeks because I want to begin something brand new on our first Sunday, our first Wednesday that we start our hybrid uh, design, which is going to be the first Sunday in June. So whatever whatever we do, it will be uh, it, it will be a shorty, you know, uh, some three to four weeks. So we would love to uh, to get something going in there. Again, I don't know. I as soon as the Lord kind of reveals that to me, I will get that out to you so you can get prepared. We're still in First Peter on Sunday mornings. That holy cow, that is some good stuff. It is just an absolute package of hope that uh, Simon Peter was was reaching out and giving to all of those sojourner Christians. Good, good stuff. Let me read us our morning Bible verse that uh, we've been going through. We're almost done. Do you guys know that tomorrow is the end of April? Has that really registered with you? 
You just think about that. Tomorrow's the end of April in 2021. We will begin the month of May, fifth month of the year on Saturday. That's just that, that's just crazy. Uh, uh, you know, I've heard it said, my daughter said this you know, just a couple of days ago, the days are long, the years are fast. And it's just, uh, there, there's so, so, so much truth to that. So time is just going by. Today, our Bible verse is out of Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, and in specific, it's verse 36, Mark 5, 36. But what I want to do is I just want to kind of set the context here, okay, what's going on in the chapter, because if we understand the backdrop to this, this, this verse then just pops off the page. See, what's going on is Jesus uh, is, is literally, he's, he's, he's walking town to town, and uh, there's always thousands of people following him, great multitudes, as Scripture calls it. There's multitudes following him. And as he is going through, he's just arrived, uh, uh, he's just arrived in, in the town. And when he gets there, Jairus uh, is one of the rulers of the synagogue. And Jairus runs up to him. And uh, the, the reason he does is his daughter is sick. And he is begging Jesus. I mean, begging Jesus to go to his house and to heal his daughter. This is Jairus' daughter. She's literally at the point of death. And so he, uh, you know, he, he's worried. He's trying to get her there. And so from the seashore, as they are making their way through the palace, or you know, making their way through the city to the palace, this is where the woman with the issue of blood comes in. And she can't get to Jesus. There's so many people. And so she literally... Uh, you can just picture this. She's just trying to weave her way even through the bottom of, of the crowd just so she could reach up and just swipe and just touch the hem of his garment. And so all of this is taking place. And then when we, when we roll into to the, uh, the, the, the verse that we're, we're talking about here, uh, somebody has now got to the ruler. Okay, remember Jesus stops and he's addressing the woman who touched him. So uh, th this whole parade, if you will, is, is making its way from the seashore to the palace or to the synagogue, rather, where he is at, where he lives. And then uh, there's the crowd of people. The lady touches the hem of his garment. Jesus stops. And while that happens, uh, verse 35 comes into play. And it says, while he was still speaking, this is Jesus, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house and he said, your daughter is dead. The daughter has now passed away. Jesus didn't get there in time. And that was the, the thought pattern here. Why trouble the teacher any further? And it's like Jairus. There's no need to bring him. Your daughter is dead. Okay? I, I just need you to understand that. Verse 36. You ready for this? I, I, and this is all about overcoming anxiety. And if there was ever a time that this man, Jairus, was beside himself, it was right now because he had just been told that his little girl had passed away. Look here at verse 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, in other words, as soon as he heard that news, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, he said to Jairus, look here, do not be afraid, only believe. Say that out loud with me, right, right where you are. Say it out loud. Do not be afraid, only believe believe. Say it one more time. Do not be afraid. Only believe. Wow, that's powerful words this morning as we continue looking at our daily Bible verses. Now, on Saturday, we start something brand new. The month of May gives us a brand new list, and we're going to talking about for the weary heart. For the weary heart. That's where our Bible verses are going to be all starting this week. We will have copies of the May list at the, the church campus this weekend, and I hope some of you have reached out to Gloria in order to get yours before uh, everything starts. Okay, just a couple more things to uh, kind of bring us up to date. Tomorrow morning, Lord willing, I'll be right back here to wrap up our week with the chat. At 9 o'clock, we'll be wrapping up chapter 20 in 1 Samuel. Then on Sunday morning, Coffee Bar is going to open at 8.30 as we get ready. All the praise team and I will be rehearsing, uh, getting ready for our morning worship. Miss Mary Weddington is going to be there making sure that you have coffee. If you'd like to come on in a little early and grab a cup of coffee and visit and fellowship for a little bit. And if you would like to help Miss Mary and be a regular part of our coffee ministry, we would love to have you. And so all you got to do is just reach out to me and say, hey, Jim, I want to help. I want to be a part of that. And so just let me know because we would love to get you in there and get you helping and uh, and all that good stuff. So uh, there is room 
for you. Always remember this. There's always a place of ministry for you at Ridgewood Baptist Church. All you got to do is just let us know that you want to do something, and we're going to put you in a place. Uh, 9.30, Sunday school is going to kick start. Brother Larry is going to be teaching the adults out in the sanctuary, but we are starting a brand spanking new Sunday school class this coming Sunday. It is geared for the younger adults uh, in our congregation and for anyone that wants to attend age around 40 uh, and under is what it is. Uh, parents, if you've got kids, bring them on in here. Go to our children's Sunday school class, and you've got your own class to go to. Johnny Smith is going to lead that. Uh, that's going to start this coming Sunday at 930. All adults uh, other than that group is going to be still meeting in the sanctuary for another month. And then the first Sunday in June, which is the start of the first quarter, then uh, Brother Norvels and Miss Pat's Sunday school class will resume in their normal meeting rooms. So lots of things are beginning to take place. Lots of happening events that are coming in. And so uh, just get, get in, get ready to get, get plugged in. Uh, so when we get to get to the summer, we get that that new quarter. You'll have uh, the young adult class, Brother Norvels, Miss Pats, and then for the adults, all the other adults will continue to meet in the sanctuary with Brother Larry, as he is going to be shucking the corn out there for all the other folks. And then we're going to take a look at things at the end of the summer, see if we need to uh, maybe break away with another class. Uh, so on and so forth. And then, of course, the exciting stuff for Wednesday nights is about to happen. Have you got July the 4th on your calendar to be at Ridgewood? If you're not going anywhere, okay, maybe if your church, if you're in the area, if your church isn't doing anything, we'd love to have you. It is Tailgate Sunday at Ridgewood. We're going to bring picnic lunches, bring the goodies, come on out to the back. We're going to have an outdoor service on the back of our campus. It is going to be a glory glorious day. Annie, Norman, you have snuck in my house this morning. I'm so glad to see you, lady. I hope your coffee is strong today. Man, this is the day. Uh, all right, y'all, this is the day that you just need a cup of coffee and a book and just wrap up and look outside and just enjoy the day, get some rest. Uh, th this, th this is resting weather for, for, uh, for the preacher. I'll tell you that. Man, oh man. Hmm. Okay, so that's all the goodies that's going on that I've got. I'm sure there's more, and if it is, you have to forgive me. I do want to say this. Uh, if you remember, yesterday was drive through prayer at Ridge, excuse me, at Fitzgerald Crossing. Uh, after I got off the live and got things settled and uploaded yesterday afternoon or yesterday morning, I just kind of snuck down to Fitzgerald Crossing and hung out with Brother Gary and uh, uh, his bride, Kim, as they are leading that ministry. And uh, I was one of the guys that was holding a sign out on Highway 1 trying to encourage others to come into that parking lot there and have drive through prayer. We did see several that come in during uh, my short window of time. I didn't get to stay long. I didn't get to stay long. Uh, but about 30, 45 minutes, but uh, it was a fun time. You know, several churches all coming together uh, meet up there at the Fitzgerald Crossing location and just have a drive through prayer. They try to do it once a week. Uh, it's, it's just glorious. And if you'd just like to be a part of that ministry, maybe just go up there and just hold a sign, okay? Go, go. Get a hold of Gary and Kim Gustin and just be a part of that. They would love for you to be up there. You can you can pray with the folks that come through. You can hand out the, the bags, that, that the little treat bags they gave. I took a lot, about... Uh, well over a hundred evangelistic bags yesterday up there that has the Jesus film. Actually, it's got information about Ridgewood to it. Uh, I took that up there to Gary so they can uh, pass that out as well. But all I did was just stand on the road and wave it to people driving by. That's huge ministry. So if you'd like to be a part of that, you let me know and uh, we'll get you connected to Gary so that you can do that. Miss, Miss Annie says you, you're in Oregon? Oh my word, lady. Oh my word. What are you doing in Oregon? Uh, you, do you have family there? Uh, man, oh man, oh man, it is 7 a.m. here. Yes, it is. It is early, early on the, the, uh, the West Coast this morning. Well, thank you for being a part of this. Oh my goodness. But, uh, uh what, what are you doing in Oregon? When are you coming back home? Uh, you gotta get yourself back here to the Delta, girl. What you thinking? Man, oh man. Mm. All right. All right. The conversation continues. Between Jonathan and now the king. Turn with me. We're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 20. We're going to continue this uh, this conversation. Community churches coming together is warranted. Oh, amen to that. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Glorious to see. Glorious to see. All right. 
1 Samuel chapter 20. And we're going to be picking up at verse 24. The conversation continues. You remember the pact that was made yesterday? Uh, the agreement that uh, Jonathan was going to go back because it was time for a festival and he was going to test the, the water, if you will, to see if his dad, King Saul, was still angry. And if he was, he was going to shoot the arrows to one place. Uh, if he wasn't angry uh, and it was safe for David to come back to the palace and he's going to shoot him in another place. It was just a, it was a signal so that David would know. And so we're going to pick up now the conversation. Jonathan has gone back to the king's palace to get ready for this festival, and he is gauging the temperament, the barometer, if you will, of King Saul. Is it safe for David to come back? We're going to pick up now at verse 24. Verse 24. Then David hid in the field. That's, that was the, the agreement that we left off yesterday. Then David hid in the field, and when the new moon had come, the king sat down to eat to eat the feast. Now the king sat on his seat, and at other times on a seat by the wall. Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side. You know, Abner was one of the, the big dogs in the army, okay? But David's place was empty, just like we thought. Nevertheless, Saul did not say anything that day, for he thought, well, you know, something has happened to him. He is unclean. You know, something is surely unclean. Now, it was customary that if a, a person thought that they were unclean, that they had not had the chance to literally cleanse themselves, to go and have their sacrifice, uh, that they were not obligated to be a part of that festival until they had, quote, come clean. Uh, and, and we also know, if you go back into Leviticus 22, you'll see that the season of cleansing yourself only lasted for one day. Okay, so for David to be gone that one time, that first time, no big deal. Okay, it was all good. All right, so really couldn't, couldn't check on Saul's temperament at that point. Okay, let's keep going. And it happened the next day, okay, now we are day two, the second day of the month that David's place was empty. Oh, okay, so it's, he's still not there. And Saul said to Jonathan, his son, why, look here, notice how he addresses this. Why has the son of Jesse not come to eat either yesterday or today? Okay, he doesn't call him by name. He doesn't, A, he just doesn't say David. He doesn't call him as one of the leaders of his army. He doesn't identify him as that literal iconic hero that he really is. He doesn't even identify him as the king's harp player. He identifies him as the son of Jesse. And who was Jesse? Nothing more than a sheep farmer. Y'all, this was a degrading statement. This was the telltale sign as to where Saul's heart was. In other words, where is that worthless boy that came out of the, of the, the, the sheep fields? That son of Jesse. So degrading. So degree. Why has the son of Jesse not come to eat either yesterday or today? So Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked permission of me to go to Bethlehem. Remember, Bethlehem's back in his territory, okay? And he said, and he's, he's repeating the conversation, okay, that David would have asked to go to Bethlehem. And he said, please let me go for our family has a sacrifice in the city and my brother has commanded me to be there. And now if I have found favor in your eyes, please let me get away and see my brothers. Therefore, he has not come to the king's table. In other words, this is the reason, dad, that your boy, the son of Jesse, 
is not here. He simply got an invitation from his family to go back to Bethlehem and to be a part of the family's sacrifice. Look at verse 30. Then Saul's anger was now aroused against Jonathan. So now then, he's mad at his own boy, the crown prince, because he sided with David and basically told David that it would be okay for him to go home for this time. The anger that was focused at David is still very vibrant, but now then it's now expanding to include Jonathan. Look, and he said, just notice what he said to Jonathan. He's talking to his own son. He said, you son of a perverse, rebellious woman. Now, I wonder what would have happened had Saul's wife been within ear distance of that. I can imagine that there would have been a couple of frying pans coming out of the kitchen at about the speed of light aimed at Saul's head if his wife had heard that. Because there is no woman going to put up with that. You, look at this, you son of a perverse, rebellious woman. Look what he just called his wife. Look how he just addressed Jonathan's mother. Now, if that would make you want to just bust the guy right away for talking about your mama like that, amen? Do I not know that you have chosen the son of Jesse? Remember, look here, he's, he's going right back to this degrading statement the son of Jesse, to your own shame and to the shame of your mother's nakedness. In other words, you just picked that lowly son of that sheep farmer over me. You just identified that. This is a heated conversation that's going on. Y'all see that? And we don't know who all else is around. We don't know who all is hearing this. I can guarantee you... if. if there's people around that's actually hearing this that was also gathered at that table, they're like, oh, snap, I got to get out of this. I don't want to be a part of this. These are things that I don't need to hear. This is a family thing, and Jim Bob needs to go. It was like, I'm I'm an exit stage left here. Okay, I got, I got to get out of here. But all this was going on at this festival, and notice how little it took to ignite so, okay, that anger had a hair trigger. And it was just waiting for something to just, just to, 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 to pull. Verse 31, for as, the lo- for as long as the son of Jesse lives on this earth, you shall not be established nor your kingdom. This is a great statement here because this is Saul's acknowledgement that he understands David is going to be the next king. You get that? For as long as the son of Jesse lives on this earth, this is the third time now he has addressed him as the son of Jesse. He's ticked. For as long as the son of Jesse lives on this earth, you, Jonathan, shall not be established nor your kingdom. He just basically said, I know what's going on. I know David is going to succeed me. I understand that you, my son, my oldest son, which makes you heir to this throne, your kingdom will never be established. You will never be established as king. It's never going to happen as long as David is alive. Do you understand, Jonathan? I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to pound this into your thick skull that the guy that you're protecting out there is going to take your place on the throne. What don't you get about it, Jonathan? We got to do something. And look what he says. Now, therefore, send and bring him to me, for he shall surely die. 
Okay, again, another another time that he's 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 broken his covenant about letting David live that we saw a couple of chapters ago. He says, Jonathan, you are heir to this throne. You are supposed to su- succeed me. Or succeed me. As long as he's walking, talking, and breathing, he's going to take it over. You don't have a chance. You're never going to be the king. You're never going to get a chance to put your stamp on Israel. Your kingdom will never be established. So go get him and let's kill him. Because if we don't, he's going to take your spot. And Jonathan answered Saul, his father. Notice, you've got one dude over here that is livid. There, there's flames flying out of this guy because he's so, so hot. And then you've got calm, cool, collected Jonathan. And Jonathan answered Saul, his father, and he said to him, Why should he be killed? What, what, what has he done? Notice the sincerity there. It's like, Dad, 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 what are you doing? Why, why are you doing this? Why do you want to kill? What, what has he done to you? What has he done to you? And guys, we know, we know that David has done nothing to King Saul. We know that David has done everything that Saul asked for him when Saul asked it of him. Okay. But Saul saw it differently. Verse 33. Then Saul cast a spear at him to kill him. So now then, Saul, that, that spear that Saul's got is a active weapon. Because he's chunked it at David. He's tried to ram David with it. And now... He's trying to kill his only son. He's trying to kill the crown prince, the one who he just told was going to be killed and be, and he was never going to be established as king if we didn't do something to David. And now he himself is trying to kill him. This guy lost his mind. Cast the spear at him to kill him. In other words, I'm not just throwing a paper airplane at you. I'm not throwing a rock or I'm not shooting a paintball at you or a Nerf, a Nerf gun, okay? I'm trying to kill you, my son. And by that action, by which Jonathan knew that it was determined by his father to kill him. Now he has his answer as to how dad really feels, which in turn is going to tell him how he has to respond to answer David, who's still waiting on a signal. David's still out in the field. Remember that? So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger. I'd be ticked off too. Dad tried to kill me and I've done nothing. So he arose, but notice he did not attack his father. You remember David didn't try to attack Saul either when he tried to kill him. He just exited, just got out. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and he ate no food the second day of the month for he was grieved for David. Grieved for David. He wasn't grieved for his father. Grieve for David because his father had treated him shamefully. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. It's a heated moment at the king's table, amen? We see without question who this man Saul really is. Knowing all the time that he could go right back to God, but he just never chose to do that. And the man that God had chosen had literally done nothing 
and he's waiting in the field, waiting on a signal. Tomorrow, well, we're going to see that signal as the rise of David continues and the demise of King Saul also continues. David would never go back to the palace. He's now on his own. He is forever a fugitive. Unbelievable. Grieved for his best friend. Not himself. Not for the king. Uh, yeah, Pam. Hi, hi Pam. Um, he wasn't even grieved for himself. Grieved for his best friend. Remember I told you yesterday, we all need a Jonathan in our life. We need to be a Jonathan to somebody. Powerful stuff here in the book of 1 Samuel. Guys, if you happen to get out today, it is still going to be a little bit on the drippy side, on the rainy side. And I just want you to be careful. If you do happen to get out, please be safe. Obviously, if the streets are wet, it makes it a little bit, a little, a little quirky to drive on. So do that. Join me tomorrow morning, if you can, as we're going to come back in here. We're going to wrap up the 20th chapter and see exactly what's going to go on. We're going to chit-chat a little bit more. We're going to drink a little bit more coffee. And we're going to talk an awful lot about Jesus. If you see somebody today, invite them to church with you on Sunday. Invite them to join us each morning right here for the chat. But by all means, tell them about Jesus. I'm out of here. Love you guys. Bye.